Okay, so in this lesson, lesson 20, the game design process, we are going to be recreating this cake defender game. Okay, so you don't want these ladybugs to touch your cake. You try and push them into the water. Your score goes up if you push them into the water, but your score decreases if they get to the cake. So those are two ladybugs. Oh, wow, and my score decreased by what looks like 10 when they touch the cake. So let's let them touch the cake again. I have negative four, yep. So it goes down by five for each ladybug that touches the cake, it looks like. And we are going to be recreating this. So let's move on. So some teachers might have you create a project guide for this. So that's what that exercise three was about. So exercise four, using multi-frame animations. In the Sample Defender game, the sprites themselves were animated. Before getting started on programming this game, take a minute to get familiar with this new way of animating sprites. They're referring to multi-frame animations. Do this. This program already includes several sprites, but they don't yet have any animations. Go to the Animations tab and check out the multi-frame animations already added to your project. Choose one for each of your characters. Remember, you can use set animation to give your sprites animations you've created in the animation tab. So we're going to use the set animation block here and here after we uh, check out these animations. Okay, first thing I notice is this name. We don't want all that crazy stuff. So we're just going to do alien and let's just name this bug. And this little slider allows you to change the, the pace at which they move. I think it looks better to make it a little faster like that. How about this? Is that? Let's slow this down. Yeah, that looks realistic. Okay. So now we have alien and bug. And now we need to use the sprite set animation. Alien. That sprite is named Ladybug. Let's just rename it Bug to avoid confusion. Okay. Cool. Now we have two sprites. Slow down. Nice work. Time to start learning how to control these multi-frame animations. So I kind of explained this in the last exercise. I think that's what they're going to be talking about now. Do this. Your sprites should be animated, but they are moving really quickly. Head back to the Animation tab. Underneath, underneath each animation, you should see a slider. Use these sliders to slow down your animations so they look more realistic. Yes, I already did that. If you haven't done that yet, use this slider to do that. So once you do that, go ahead and click Finish and move on. Editing multi-frame animations. Your sprites will look a lot more realistic if they turn around when they are moving. You can switch back and forth between multi-frame animations when the user presses different keys. Do this. Read the code and run the program. Make sure you know how the sprite responds to the arrow keys. Uh, okay, so, all right, yeah, they have, if you look, we have a left and a right. So they want the hero to go left when you press left and right to uh, when when you press right. Why does it say hero? Okay, all right, hero, that's fine. In the animation tab, create a copy of the alien animation by clicking the following button. Okay, so let's look for this button when we click animation. Uh, okay, duplicate, right? Yeah, duplicate. Oh, I hate how they rename it Alien Pink Walk. Alien. Okay, duplicate it. And we'll say Alien uh, Left. Yeah, let's do that. Alien Left, Alien Right. Okay. So if we want this guy to be facing left, I'm sure that's the next part of this. Use the flip, yeah. Use the tool to, this tool to flip your animation. Make sure you flip both frames using this button. 
Okay, so pay attention here. So this is my left alien, and we want to flip it using this button. What you want to do is you want to click on these frames. These are the frames, okay? So I clicked on the first frame. Now I'm going to flip it, okay? Now it's facing left. Now i got to click on this second frame. Flip it. Now they're both facing left, and now this guy is facing left as well. And look, he's moving to the left. This guy's moving to the right. This guy's moving to the left. Let's adjust this slider. Cool. Now it looks like they're going at the same speed. Okay. Rename your new animation. We already did that. Alien left. Use your new animation and old animation so that the alien faces the correct direction when moving. Where do you think you'll need to set the sprite's animation in your code? I think... I think we're going to have to set the animation in here. So let's do sprite set animation. Uh, hero is the name of this sprite. And if you press the left button, you want it to face left. We're going to do the same thing down here. If you press the right button, you want it to face right. All right, so let's run it and see if it works. Yes, it does. All right, looks like we're done this exercise. Getting started. Set animations. You should have already reviewed the planning guide for this project. A lot of the work to turn this project guide into a working game has already been started. Based on the project guide, you're going to do the rest of this work. So do this. Before we get started, you'll want some better animations for each of your sprites. In the animation tab are animations for each of your sprites. Go look at what they are. In your code, all right, well, let's, let's do that. Before. Okay, so we got alien walk right, cake, ladybug. We're probably going to need to make alien walk left. Just something to keep in mind. <clears throat> in your code, give each sprite its appropriate animation. Use the ones provided for now, but later you'll be able to go change them. Okay, so they don't want us to create animal walk or alien walk left yet, I don't think. Okay. But you'll be able to go change them. Okay, so what are we doing? In your code, give each sprite its appropriate animation. Okay. All we're doing is setting the animation. So cake, cake, cake. Set animation player, player, and what is that animation? Alien walk right. Enemy one. These are the ladybugs. Okay. Enemy one. Uh, ladybug. Enemy two also is going to be ladybug. All right. And I think we're I think we're good to go now. All right, yeah, the ladybugs are up here. I'm sure we're going to fix that in a later exercise. Well done. Let's move on. <clears throat> Moving the enemies. It's time to start writing the code that will move your sprites. To begin, you'll need to get your enemy sprites to a random position and moving across the screen. Do this. At the top of your program, after you create each enemy sprite, Write the code that will move it to the correct position and give it the correct velocity. Okay, so use sprite.x to set the x position to 0. Use sprite.y to set the y position. Should be a random number between 150 and 250. Okay, so underneath each enemy, we're going to set the x position, sprite.x equal to 0, enemy 1, 0, make sure you do that, and let's do it for enemy 2, enemy 2, 0. Okay, now use sprite.y to set the y position, and it should be a random number between 150 and 250. So let's get these y, sprite.y blocks. <sighs> All right, enemy one, and we're going to need a random number, which is in math, between 150 and 250, 250. 
All right, enemy two. One fifty. Two fifty. All right, cool. Done that. Use sprite dot velocity x to set the x velocity to two. So I think this is going to get the the ladybugs to be moving toward the cake. So what are we looking for? Sprite dot velocity x. All right. And I think that's it for this level or exercise. Enemy one, two, enemy two, two. Okay, let's start this. Cool, yes. Test your program. Your enemy sprites should now be moving across the bridge. Yes, they are. All right, and now we can move on to the next exercise.